write down the value of p right if you want post papers and study material go to allpostpapers.com you're going to be writing physical sciences very soon for past papers and study notes go to allpostpapers.com so post the video and go through the question statement i'm just going to start answering the questions i'll just go back to the question statement when i need to demonstrate something okay with that said write down the value of p so let's take a look at what is happening mc right being m d e c is parallel to the y-axis and then we're given the coordinates of e which are said to be minus six and minus one m and e share the same x coordinate because m e m c m d is parallel to the y-axis so that tells us that p is equals to minus six reason being that m and e share the same x value right that is 4.1 4.2 on the other hand show that q is equals to 4 right so let's see what is happening in the question statement we are told that ad is q minus one unit so ad that is q minus one unit we're supposed to find the value of q what else do we have d uh, we can see that the y value at d is zero so from d to m should be q because the y value at d is zero and the y value at m is q so from d to m should be q because md is parallel to the y-axis they only differ in the y values so we have ad we have md we are also going to figure out ma so take a look at this ma is a radius me is also a radius me should be close to ma but what is me the y value at m is q the y value at e is minus one so me is q plus one so ma as well should be q plus one so in that triangle now we can use theorem of pythagoras because it's a right angled triangle right the radius md is parallel to the y-axis that is the reason okay so we'll say q plus one squared is equals to q squared plus q minus one squared so q plus one squared that will be q squared plus two q plus one and then we have q squared plus q squared minus two q plus one right so let's start by dropping off the ones we're gonna have q squared plus two q being equals to two q squared minus two q all right that's where we are now so let's put all this in one side we're gonna have zero being equals to 2q squared minus q squared that will just be q squared and then minus 4q so 0 q as a common factor we're left with q minus 4 so q is equals to 0 or q is equals to 4 we know that q is supposed to be equals to 4 like we've been asked to prove so that is 4.2 what about 4.3 determine the equation of the circle in the form x minus a squared plus x minus b squared is equals to r squared so let's start with the center we know that the value of p uh, which is what uh, p is the x value right is what m and e shares so we know that we have minus six and then q is the y value of p is the x value and q is the y value of m uh, which is 4 we just calculated it in 4.2 so we have the center what about the radius the radius we know that it is ma right and then ma we said it is q plus 1 so that is 4 plus 1 which is equal to 5 so the equation will be x plus 6 squared plus y minus 4 squared being equal to 25 the radius squared okay so that is 4.3 what about 4.4 4. 
If the circle is translated two units to the left, determine the minimum distance between the circle and the y-axis. So take a look at this, the minimum distance. So let me use my ruler here to demonstrate the idea. So from the center to the closest part of the circle, uh, that is five units, right? Uh, okay, so this is from minus six to minus one. We know that the radius is five units. So if the center is at minus six, it means that point is at minus one. So the distance is this part here. The distance is one unit. But then now we're translating the cycle two units to the left. So, so from minus one, if we move two units to the left, we end up at minus three. So the minimum distance is three units. Is the minimum distance because we have this part as well. We have this part, we have this part. This is just the minimum distance. But when we move it two units uh, to the left, it will therefore be equals to three units. The minimum distance will be three units. Okay, that is 4.4. 4.5, calculate the coordinates of A and B. A and B. So, hmm, okay, what's happening? We have the X coordinate of D. We have X of D which is minus six. And then we have B there, and then we have A. All these points vary in the X value. So our concentration is on the X value, to be honest. So what is the distance from A to D? It is Q minus one, as you can clearly see. Q is four, it means that it is three units from A to D, okay? So if from A to D is three units, then it means that the X coordinate of A will be minus nine. Because from minus 9 to minus 6, that is 3 units, right? But then from D to B is 3 units as well. So if D is minus 6 and B is on the right of D, then the X coordinate of D of B, I mean, should be minus 3. So it means that the coordinates of A is minus 9 and 0. And the coordinates of B is minus 3 and 0 x and the corresponding y value so that is 4.5 what about 4.6 determine the equation of tangent b c and then 4.7 write down the coordinates of c calculate the size of angle a c b i think those questions are pretty much straightforward right i can just tell you the ideas and then i'll move to the other questions so obviously we're going to find the tangent of the equation of the tangent bc right the reason being that we will need the coordinate of c but after we've calculated the coordinate of c how do we then find the angle acb so the angle acb is this angle right here so let me show you one idea which we can use so one idea is that we extend this line right uh, we extend this line and we find theta there using the gradient of that line because Akiri we have calculated the um the, the gradient of BC as we were attempting to find the equation of BC. So we can find that angle theta, the angle of inclination. But uh vertical opposite angles, so that should be theta as well. Right? And then we can use what is my ruler doing? And then we can extend this line this line as well and find the inclination of AC, right? So let's say this is alpha. So we can find the inclination of AC. Uh, let me just complete this triangle. I want to show you something. So we have a triangle ABC, right? Alpha should be equal to theta plus our angle ACB, which we're interested in. So you calculate theta, you calculate alpha. Alpha is equal to theta plus the angle ACB. And you find the answer to the angle. You, you find the size of angle ACB. That is the idea. But in the comment section, I want you guys to do something. 4.8, which angle did you get? And do you care to explain the steps you took? Because I know there are people that are going to take a totally different uh, strategy, a totally different approach, which is completely fine. But write in the comment. I want to know which approach you use and which answer you got ultimately. Here we go.